for Ryan Stout. Thank you all so much. Nearly all of you, you didn't clap once. Holy shit, everybody. Good evening. Another round of applause for, uh, for her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, of course, for Aubrey and my dear, dear friends. The other ones. Good evening! <laughs> Everybody, tonight I'm going to talk about suicide. Maybe the whole time. So I just tell you that I don't want to get like two, three jokes in and have you going, is he really going to talk about suicide? Yes! Yes! <laughs> But maybe not. If I feel you guys really backing off, if I feel you really tensing up about the topic, if you refuse to think about it and you start feeling it too much, I will segue straight into child molestation. <laughs> but you have a choice! And I want you to be aware that you have a choice. Oh, you're laughing now. Great. You wouldn't clap for me when I came to the stage because I'm suicide and child molestation. <laughs> I'm your god. <laughs> if you're thinking about taking your own life, I always say, uh, have a snack. Because <laughs> a lot of times when you think you want to kill yourself, you're really just hungry. <laughs> Look at you, you know. Have a snack. And I say make that snack gummy bears. A good pound, pound and a half of gummy bears. Because then, if you do end up taking your own life, that autopsy is going to be amazing. <laughs> Just some medical examiner dictating into a microphone. Uh, the time is 9.35 and the contents of the stomach appear to be... <sighs> a, uh, a carnival. <laughs> Of goo! <laughs> For the record, I have no idea what this is. This some sort of aurora borealis. This could be unicorn semen, for all I know. We're gonna leave this. Cause of death blowing a unicorn. Is that a thing? <laughs> If you're a dwarf, is anybody here a dwarf? If you're a dwarf, this isn't derogatory, it's inclusionary. Calm the fuck down. <laughs> if you're a dwarf and you kill yourself, whoever finds your body will giggle a little bit. <laughs> but that's true. Everybody. Are you serious? You walk into a room, there's a dwarf hanging there? <laughs> How do you not just... <laughs> oh, shit! Is this real? <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> Those little shoes. <laughs> How do you get the rope up there? <laughs> Bring me a stick. We're going to break him open. <laughs> in there, I'm sure of it! I was devastated when I found out the Tooth Fairy wasn't real, because that means it was my parents who molested me. Okay, back to suicide then, asshole! What the fuck do you want? You need to hop on board for jokes! I think if you kill yourself, you should wear the Mickey Mouse ears. Because then the police have to include that in your chalk outline. You clapped along. That's participation. <laughs> Fuck it. Kill yourself at Disneyland. Yeah. Ruin someone's family. <laughs> 
just on the log ride, child, child, mother, father. Yay! You're in the back seat, blood. <laughs> Sit in front. <laughs> They're a great place to kill yourself, oh my god. Kill yourself at a whorehouse. Because then, for once, the hookers have to hide your body. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> this is great. How's the cookie? Good? Come, come to Flappers, enjoy a cookie and a suicide joke, everybody. <laughs> theater shows where it's like a murder mystery who done it and you guys sit out there and eat and there's a bunch of actors and always one of them done it you know what i'm talking about you should kill yourself at one of those <laughs> No, Hector, the real police, not fucking Andrew. <laughs> you know, if you die in the toilet, people will compare you to Elvis Presley. <laughs> For the rest of the time that your name is in existence on this planet, you will be compared to the king of rock and roll. But... If you can get clever enough to figure out a way to die on a cross. <laughs> way better. <laughs> Ask yourself, king of rock and roll or king of kings? <laughs> Is that too soon? Because of the Elvis thing. I'm with you. I'm with you. Not because of the Jesus thing. She's like, no, I don't believe in fiction. <laughs> yeah, who doesn't believe in an afterlife? The guy talking about suicide! <laughs> I think if you kill yourself, you should have a bucket list on your body. You know what a bucket list is, right? The final things you want to do with life, you should have one on your body. But it's a fake list. <laughs> so they find you, they find the list, and it's like, item one, hide the treasure. Check. <laughs> Set the timers. Check. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Come out to my parents. No check. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of a sad one. I like how some people moaned, some people laughed, other people sat there and go, I don't know what to do. <laughs> That's how life works. I think no matter how you kill yourself, you should uh, think about how you're going to dress. I think if you electrocute yourself, you should dress up first in your best Ben Franklin costume. <laughs> Just a kite with a key on it. Some sort of wig, it's all on the floor next to an outlet. You know, carbon monoxide turns your skin a little pink kind of color, did you know that? Which is much better fashion-wise for a springtime suicide. <laughs> I haven't worked out the logistics on this, but I feel like you should set up some sort of mechanism, maybe like a ceiling fan and a piece of rope. So whoever finds your body, your dead arm is just waving a white flag. <laughs> You have a 
t-shirt that says, I surrender. <laughs> Live strong bracelet. Somebody hits the wrong switch and it just... <laughs> Shut it off, Hector! Shut it off! <laughs> That's right, Hector, the actor from earlier, is a police officer during the day. <laughs> I've built a world. <laughs> All right, audience interaction point. A man in New Zealand killed himself by cutting off his own head. He cut off his own head! Head. And again, look at some people just sitting there, jaded LA audience, like, you know, it's a thing that happens. <laughs> people cut their own heads off. <laughs> so I guess this is my question for you, group of thinking adults. How do you cut off your own head? I'm really asking. How do you do it? If you have an idea, yell it out. Guillotine. Guillotine. Look at you. Number one answer on the board. <laughs> Most people who cut their own heads off, homemade guillotine, but that's not what this guy did! Somebody else! Hacksaw. Chainsaw. Uh, you said hacksaw? <laughs> you said hacksaw, like somebody's sitting there just going, all right, we'll get through it. <laughs> Chainsaw. Chainsaw. Chainsaw, okay. What's weird is there's, people want to yell out like one word things, chainsaw, window. <laughs> What did that even mean? Like these one word answers. Okay, so you're gonna put your head in a window and then just let it fall. It was on an episode of Supernatural. So not only is she admitting I didn't really come up with this. But what convinced her was a piece of fiction. I've seen some windows fall and it seems like they hit the back of your neck and then it might hurt a lot. So maybe it'll kill you. But I think your head stays on. <laughs> What's weird is the one, one word answer, chainsaw. I get one word answers a lot. I was in Louisville, Kentucky. I said, how do you kill yourself? How do you cut off your own head? Oh my God, hands went up. <laughs> Those people want to kill themselves. <laughs> And their answers were unbelievable. One woman said chainsaw. I said, okay, go ahead, elaborate. She was like, well, I, you, you just put it on a shelf, and then you just walk into it. <laughs> I, mean, I don't think so. <laughs> One guy just said, boomerang! <laughs> Kentucky, of course, known for its boomerang work. <laughs> One guy, one guy said, a machete and a bag of crystal meth. You see what he did? You see what he did? He took two ideas and he created a story. My point is, it's not easy. We had a lot of brains in this room trying to figure out a way that would effectively do it. Not a lot of success stories. This guy in New Zealand, this is what he did. He took an electric chainsaw, story, slow down, plugged it into a wall on a timer, took some sleeping pills, laid down, rested the blade on his neck, fell asleep, timer kicked in, voom, no more head, now here's the point. We all thought about it. Didn't really come up with much. I say if you're smart enough, clever enough, to figure out a way to cut off your own head, chances are you probably have the intelligence necessary to work out some of the problems in life. <laughs> Mickey, you want to kill yourself in the first place? <laughs> you can figure out a way to cut your head off, but you can't talk to your father? <laughs> it's weird. You know, most people kill themselves, don't even leave a note. Do you believe that? No note. Rude! You leave a note. You blame some people. Name names. Doesn't even need to be real. You could start your note to Her Majesty the Queen. Leave a meaningful note. If you're not a good writer, put off suicide until you're more articulate. I almost mumbled the word articulate. <laughs> I think any suicide note would be a lot more interesting with just a little bit 
of origami. <laughs> I heard Dave killed himself. I wonder why. I don't know. Let's go to the note. <laughs> I was depressed. <laughs> Because his girlfriend. <laughs> was a whore. <laughs> Leave a meaningful note. No LOLs in your suicide note, goddammit. I don't care if they're ironic. <laughs> If you're reading this, you probably found my body. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> Don't worry, BRB. <laughs> JK, I'm dead, LOL. <laughs> FML. <laughs> YOLO. <laughs> Sincerely, Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Hector. Hector? <laughs> I love that by the end of all of it, it's Hector killing himself. That's fantastic. Nobody else liked it, but you and I are the same page. <laughs> Andrew. Okay, I mean, look, choose your own adventure, everybody. I don't care. I'm gonna leave this room and you guys have your own stories to tell. <laughs> In college, I was a writing major, and one of my instructors actually asked everyone in one of my classes as an assignment to go home and write a suicide note, which I thought was kind of creepy, a little sadistic. I didn't want to put myself through that, right? So I just turned in one of my old ones. <laughs> I'm kidding. I turned in my dad's. You don't even know him! I actually just moved into a new neighborhood, and as soon as I did, I got on the internet and I looked up all the registered sex offenders in my neighborhood, and then I wrote hate mail to all the child molesters. I made sure they would read it. I wrote my letters in crayon. <laughs> I'm sorry, what the fuck is going on now? Because some people laughed and some people, oh, what is all? Oh, 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 you should not be tricking those pedophiles. That is not... Whose side are you on? My friends and I were sitting around speaking of pedophiles. My friends and I. This isn't going where you think it's going. Slow it down. We were wondering, hypothesizing, we wanted to know if there was a face that any human could make that would make them look like a creepy, disgusting child molester. <laughs> For science. Again, you may not like this subject matter, please respect the intellectual endeavor. And this is what we came up with. Anybody, anybody in here can look like a creepy, creepy predator just by doing three things. Number one, relax your whole face. <laughs> Great work, dude. Feel free to do this with me. Just for the enjoyment of those around you. It's gonna be more fun if you get involved. You pocketed some of those cookies, didn't you? Uh, Relax your whole face. Step two, chin down. <laughs> Fucking do it, dudes. Are you kidding with a little pencil mustache and the shirt like that? You're gonna be great at this. Relax your whole face, chin down. Now step three, you smile but only with your upper lip. <laughs> 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 
Shut up. <laughs> so take that home. Change your Facebook profile, folks. Let's start it here and spread the information out. If you lose friends, it's working. It's called the pedo smile. And, and we figured that out drunk in line at Disneyland. <laughs> we spent the rest of the day scurrying away from angry parents. Oh shit, she saw us go. Fuck her. Try to blend. <laughs> Some of you didn't do it with me. You, you fucking will. You'll be driving home, checking the rear view. Just... How does he get the one lip to just... Oh, I got it! Oh, shit! Oh, shit! I just imagine you go through one of those red light camera lights. The picture in the mail, sir, is this you? <laughs> We're gonna book you for two things. Uh, we have a hunch. Take the information home, work on it. Add your own little things to it, be scientists. Email me with your data. I'm not kidding, I got one email from one person one time. Subject line, pedo smile. And I open it up and to my delight, all it said was dot, 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 lick your teeth. No! Brilliant! Brilliant. Master maneuver, took some practice. speaking a breathy voice. <laughs> if you have kids, go home, do it to your kids. Why would you? They're yours. Scare the shit out of them. You teach them if you ever see that face, you run the other way. I'm trying to help. I never have the balls, but sometimes, sometimes, I'll be on, I'll be on an airplane. And I'll just want to like call over the flight attendant and say, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I'm a registered sex offender. <laughs> Which means I can't be within 25 feet of this screaming little monster. <laughs> I think there's a seat available in first class. If you wouldn't mind moving me. <laughs> Apply what we've learned. It's a risk reward system. What could go wrong? What a few uniformed people walk around saying, stay away from them. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Meanwhile, where are you? Where are you? In the front, feet up, sipping booze. Winner, winner, champagne dinner. <laughs> I think, stay positive. I think that's the message. <laughs> is, you know, Aristotle said the mark of an educated mind is the ability to entertain a thought without accepting it. And I always hope that's true for every comedy audience. Hope they can sit in the darkness and laugh at things and know that, oh, these are just thoughts. And then we laugh and then we leave and that's all. <laughs> Some people fucking suck at this. <laughs> Have you seen the internet lately? Oh, people want to complain about jokes and how the jokes hurt. But here's the thing, every joke sucks. 
Take that home with you. Understand that. Every joke sucks if you're gonna be a fucking twat about it. Doesn't matter what it is. Why was six afraid of seven? Because seven, eight, nine. And what does the internet do? Really? Really? Um, cannibalism. That's what we're joking about. You have a species eating its own kind. Don't you realize that cannibalism is a taboo all over the world? Don't you have any empathy for how afraid six is? What about nine? Nine was fucking eaten. <laughs> You're just gonna re-victimize nine and the families of nines everywhere with a little joke? What if they're nines in the audience, huh? Fuck you. Uh, a horse walks into a bar. Oh, real nice. Animal abuse. You have an equine going into a bar which serves alcohol, which is poison. You're gonna poison a horse and you think we should laugh at that? Fuck off. <laughs> I didn't even finish the joke on that one. Knock, knock. The homeless don't even have doors! Okay. <laughs> They're so good about complaining why the joke is bad, but they don't understand why it's ever good. They never explain, oh, people aren't laughing at cannibalism. They're laughing because eight sounds like eight, you fucking hooker! <laughs> There's no reason to get emotionally outraged by jokes. It's a cerebral activity. There's nothing that's supposed to be outrageous about it. Like, I'll give you an example. You know how some people eat placenta? <laughs> what did I just say about entertain the thoughts? Don't be judgy. Wait until the jokes are over. Some people eat placenta. Fact. I didn't invent that, I'm just reporting information. Why? And I tried it. I tried it. But my tongue wasn't long enough. I... See how fun these can be with all the fucking judgment? Be positive, everybody. Don't ever let somebody say suicide's not funny. You go, well, that mouse ears thing was actually pretty fucking priceless. You can't joke about child molestation. Well, that face was actually pretty great. <laughs> be positive. My best friend Josh, one of the most positive people I ever met, he always wanted to be a surgeon. A surgeon. He worked really hard. He went to school. He paid a lot of money. Then, last year, got into a car accident. Lost these bottom two fingers. Gone. So now... Gynecologist. That is a good, positive story with a moral and a lesson about overcoming adversity. Yeah, some people laugh, some other people. Mm. You know why? Because they're imagining like a nubby nub rubbing against their thigh or like the fingers of the glove dangling down over the tickle. Right on the Hershey kisser. But that's not me bringing that to the show. That's negative people. My buddy said he loses one more finger, proctologist. That's what he said. And then motivational speaker. He's a brilliant man. And porn star. He's a brilliant man. And a great fucking bowler. <laughs> Dr. Joshua Knowles in San Francisco. I'm not kidding. He helped come up with the pedophile thing. <laughs> no, he's a gynecologist. He's a pediatric gynecologist. <laughs> real. That, that sounds real. If it's real, we need to stop that job right now. Other people just laugh. You know why? They entertain the thoughts! You guys have been a ton of fun. I'm Ryan Stout. Congrats.